All right, what's up? We're here with more of Avernum 2 Crystal Souls. This time we are going to journey into the Spiral Pit. Let's see how we do there. And let's see if we, if our group can actually succeed where others have failed. Ahead, you can see shambling undead creatures created by the curse in the caverns. They walk among the grim traces of a group of adventurers who met an untimely end here. And at some point, I do want to actually get a hold of monsters for si Simulacrum spell. So we can actually utilize that. So far, nobody here I particularly want, though, for that. So, like I said in the previous video, if you remember from the first Avernum game, our group of adventurers there only bought Murtis a Reprieve from the Undead in the Spiral Pit. But let's see if we can actually defeat the curse this time. So far, of course, Moses tanking a majority of the damage, I notice. It probably is dangerous to do this, do this while limited on potions, but I'm going to try my best anyway. But I did get three energy elixirs like you all saw me in the last video. So hopefully that's going to be enough to get me to survive here. And as always, we'll pick up more loot on the way. Ooh, does she have leather? No, she doesn't actually. Okay, it's starting to weigh on her a little bit, so hopefully... Uh... Even though I would sell these at this point, I, I mean, I'm going to hang on to them in case I desperately need something to help me out. So far, none of these are what I want for my, uh, for my Capture Soul Simulacrum spells. And the capture soul mechanics are a little bit different, by the way, for each, like, monster. Like, some... I highly recommend you buy two levels of capture soul and simulacrum, like, immediately as soon as you get them. Because of how it is impossible to catch some good monsters without the level two. I never could find the level three uh, capture soul simulacrum spells, though. Or at least I don't remember where they are anyway. But you do want to buy at least two levels like immediately. Even though I normally recommend that you save your money and then buy the level two spells later. And of course you can always find a sort of thing in dungeons anyway. The like.
mean, see, look at that. Uh, Seraphina is always already down quite a bit when it comes to spell energy. So far, we're running into greater shades, maybe skeletons, stuff like that. Okay, so I did want to... Okay, another one here. Dead habit. Okay, Iron Short Sword. You know what? At this point, let's go ahead and dual wield. We can give the shield... To her. No, that weighs too much. Uh, let's go ahead and sell that. Off against it's empty. It's lone resident got out and started walking around long ago, and then was smashed, and then got up and started walking around again, and so on. Man, I wasn't done exploring yet. Oh, no. Okay, so nothing new for this, for these dialogues here. I see bones. Is this one of those area effects creatures? Yeah, they, they are. Should have known. Crap, I did not realize he was that low. Let's do that. But at least he is dual wielding now. So that what that's so that always helps. Okay, I normally would sell these, but I, I think of where we are gonna I need them. So now they all have iron helmets. And the dual wielding, of course, will get stronger as we progress. Blessed belt. Any of them need a belt blessed belt? I feel like this shield's gonna be better. But we have to take off something. Let's take off the 
bracers. Because one thing, no matter what, you don't want to do is encumber. The box contains the broken fragments of a crystal. There's also some ash and charred wood. It looks like the crystal exploded inside the box. Let's just do this. That's a BS kind of special ability. Are you kidding me? You can terrify just like that. First, let's heal up and then we'll do. Crystal Woven Chitin. Okay. That bonus to resistance is really good, so we'll do that. Okay. Oh, you know what, actually? I think we need the spell barrier 2 to get to that center again. We can't just use regular dispel barrier crystal. It has to be the second level, which we don't have access to yet. So this is something we're, we are going to have to come back to, unfortunately. So, yeah. I just now thought about that. We're going to have to have this spell bearer too before we can eliminate the spiral pit curse. I actually remember that now. That's a bummer. Well, at least we took care of the gas inside for now. You tell Commander Lynn about your raid on the spiral pit. She is pleased. Only a temporary measure, of course. The gas always return, but this will help. She gives you a large pouch of coins. Okay, well... At least we took care of most of the stuff on the outside, so... Lord. I cannot wait to eliminate the rest of the spiral pit, though. I swear. But you know what? I think we do have enough money to after we sell our items I think we'll we will have enough money to buy some first aid or at least buy the last one anyway purging the fire there is a persistent occupation of undead in a cavern to the northeast of Murtis constant help is needed to manage the mindless hunters that emerge from it if anyone can remove the curse that powers the dark magic of the pit there is a long-standing bounty of a thousand coins available, collected from Commander Lin of Murtis. Okay, so we can definitely take it on. 
Although it won't be right now because I just remembered that you need a spell barrier t level two in order to get to the center. Okay, well, that was my fault though because I forgot completely about that bummer. What a bummer. Okay. I'll tell you what we could do. Yeah, we could clear out another one of those. Uh, that's first. Let's go ahead and take care of get the last first aid level, and we are good to go. Will y'all move out of the way? I hate the character placement sometimes. I like the NPCs. This would be so awkward. Okay, so now I have a total of eight first aid. You know what, let's go ahead and buy a couple. We'll buy two levels of each of those. We'll buy two levels of each of these. right now we have regenerating war chant what can we do in the meantime though So let's, I would investigate the lost boats, but that was pretty tough of a event. I might have to be better prepared for that before I take that on. You know what? Let's go ahead and head to Fort Dubno. We'll talk to people in Fort Dubno, and then we can do a mission, whatever mission we have there. We do have a quest to clear out, and that is the Nefer Investigation one. Which is this one. Uh, oh, this is still the same band of merchants that we had before. A refugee walks up to you and mutely holds out a begging bowl. He bounces his head in an almost, but not quite humble manner. I'm Dorkin, sirs. Spare a coin? How'd you wind up here? Well, I'll tell you. The Empire threw me down here for being poor. Simple as that. So I go to Katra and I work hard. Make a business for myself. What sort of business? I was the best cobbler in Katra. And then the Empire comes down here and they make me poor again. So I'm starting to figure maybe some fellow's just meant to be poor. So could you maybe give me a coin? A cobbler? Have any magic boots? No, never did. Just simple leather work. Nothing for an active, high ambition adventurer like you. Dorkin, the beggar, continues to favor you with a resigned, sardonic expression. His bowl is still proffered boldly in your direction. Here you go. Thank you kindly. He nods and moves on. There is a young, dark-skinned man standing at this table, chopping healing herbs as fast as he can. He's obviously exhausted. You ask who he is. I am Euchre the Healer. Are you well? He looks you over for ailments. Are you the only healer in Fort Dubno? 
Yes, I'm the, the only healer for miles. I heal all who come to me. Soldiers first, but I tend to everyone eventually. I have some time to help you if you need it. Though, heaven knows, everything's been mad since the barriers came down. What happened after the barriers came down? The assault on Katra was bad enough, but when the Vonatai barriers dropped, the war really started up again. The Empire was more reinforced and we were more prepared, and the bodies have come nonstop. I need some more supplies, but I do the best I can. What sort of supplies do you need? Herbs, clean gauze, Raymo, salve, comfort root. I do what I can, but I'm always running out of something vital. Can he heal me? He looks you over. You seem fine. Can I buy any supplies? I don't have enough as it is. Go talk to Wal Walner. He might be able to help you. Okay. The pit in the center of this room contains several dead Avernite soldiers awaiting cremation. They are kept from rotting by blocks of ice laboriously dragged from the colder tunnels. Yeah, I hate to rob a dead body, but we can sell that leather for a few coins. Okay, we were gonna take all that wine. A jolly merchant stands in front of the counter, eager to greet you. The counter is covered with bottles of wine, and he has a flush face of one who has been sampling of his own wares. Welcome, friends. I'm Rorik, brewer and cook of great renown. Tell us about your wine. His belly jiggles as he laughs. I was banished into Avernum because my wines were too good, made them jealous, and I still make them. You can buy the best wines and rations here to, the, to take the edge off your journey. You were sent down here for making wine? He sighs and leans close to you. Well, actually, it was revenge for striking up a very close friendship with the magistrate's wife. But don't tell anyone. But don't tell anyone. He laughs for a full minute. I've done a lot of journeying recently. Well, if you're brave or stupid enough to travel in these times, I'll do what I can to help. Rorix waits to see what else you want. He frequently samples a taste or a swig of his own goods. I need some rations. Rorix's rations are edible, that's all you can say. Some wine would be great right now. There are still a few bottles of wine that Rorik hasn't drunk. I don't need anything. Really? Not even wine? Well, return when you're when you come to your senses. Okay, I already went through that dialogue just to make it sure. An imposing woman with gray hair is setting up shop. She's sweeping, putting up shelves, and getting ready for business. She is highly displeased by your intrusion. Greetings, I'm Faye. Now leave. What are you doing in here? I'm setting up my shop, and you are trespassing. Sorry to intrude, we'll be leaving now. She silently debates whether to call for the guards. I'm still recovering from, es from escaping Katra. I don't need you bothering me. Were you there when the Empire attacked? Yes, I was there, and I've had what I've had to say about it ignored enough. Fool soldiers, you don't know when someone is trying to help. Now leave me alone. Please help me. What did you see? She snaps at you. I have been ignored long enough. They all say they don't know where the attack came from, but I saw lights on the island south of Katra not long before the troops arrived. They say I imagined it, that there was nothing there. That's where they came from. She speaks very loud and clear. You won't deal with me, I won't deal with you. Now will you please leave? She turns her back on you. There is an old, thin old man sitting under the tree fishing. He doesn't notice you. You tap him on the shoulder. Eh? Oh. Hello, soldier. Call me Scott. As you watch, he reels in a pale, wriggling cayfish. Edible, but unappealing. What are you up to? Oh, just an old man, whiling away his last year's fishing. How'd you wind up here? Nephilim destroyed my farm years ago. Now I just do odd jobs for the fort. And fish. And keep those darned refugees off my island. You don't like the refugees? No, that's not it. They just scare the fish. He sighs. I have nothing against them. I give them the fish I catch. 
Scott continues to fish in the dark lake, doing his best to shut out the horrors of the world. How can you relax like this with the war on? He looks up at you. Friend, the world is always full of suffering. It gets worse or it gets better, but it never ends. So sometimes, no matter how bad it gets, you just need to force out a little moment of peace. I'll tell you that for nothing. He invites you to sit and rest with him for a few minutes. I'll rest. You spend a few minutes actually relaxing and enjoying the beauty of Avernum. It's a rare pleasure. And then you bid, bid Scott a kind farewell and move on. You are in the middle of a makeshift refugee camp, filled with some of the men and women who successfully fled Katra after it was destroyed. They are armed with crude implements they managed to grab as they fled their homes. Living conditions are crude at best, but livable. The people are poorly fed and the fires barely hold off the chill, but they're getting by. As you look around, you are peppered with questions about what's going on in the outside world. Some worried souls also ask you if you've seen a missing loved one. You answer their questions as best you can and leave. So, you meet a large man in leather armor. He has the longbow slung over his shoulder and a full quiver of arrows at his side. He looks you over nervously as you you approach. I'm Gordon. I hope he says. I hope you are faring well. You have a job in town? Just killing time. He looks over his shoulder, eager to move on. He doesn't seem to incline to say anything else. Anything I can help you with? No, need to be moving on. I have my own mission. Goodbye. He nods and moves on. You meet a short, stocky man with blonde hair and a broad smile. His robes have been repeatedly splashed by the byproducts of his alchemy, leaving constellations of tiny holes. He stands and shakes your hand. I'm Walner. Welcome to this place of learning. What sort of learning do you specialize in? He waves at the books and scrolls littered about, about, littered about his shop, collecting all the knowledge there is to be had in our subterranean land. Enough to heal, for example, or to work my alchemy. What sort of alchemy? He indicates the tiny holes in his robes with embarrassment. I do alchemy often, although my concoctions often spit back at me. Many of my recipes are quite useful. In particular, I know how to make a variety of simple potions. If you have the money and inclination, you can buy my aid. Is there anything you were trying to learn? A few things. I've been trying to learn about cursed items, and I hope, and I have been trying to learn ab about dread curses. Dark topics, true, but all the more important because of their seriousness. Why are you interested in cursed items? They are fascinating. Usually they are the results of magical experimentation gone wrong, but not always. I have heard that there are even items that cause their bearer to become ill constantly. If you ever find an item like that, just throw it away. It will do nobody any good. What do you know? want to know about dread curses? A dread curse is a powerful and pernicious curse, usually laid on a place to magically punish those who intrude. They are very difficult to cure, but I suspect that it is not impossible. If someone told me who can cure such a curse, I would reward them. While you decide what else to ask about, Walner continues his work on making some sort of potion. Occasionally, a splatter of harsh, smoky fluid splatters out and burns another hole in his robes. Can I buy some potions from you? Okay, so we have some elixirs and potions. Walner is willing to sell a Vernite soldiers a few of his excess potions. Can you make a potion for me? Okay, so another place where we can make po get potions made. small, nervous woman sitting at the table. She is preparing several vials of poison with greasy fingers. The shop is littered with a wide mix of supplies, all of them dirty and scratched, probably looted. When you enter, she turns, sees your insignia, and gives you a cold smile. I'm Amalia. This is my shop. 
Interesting stuff you're selling here. I sell tools. I also sell goods Avernites have um, acquired in their travels. She chuckles. You're lucky. You've come to my shop during a busy time. How am I in luck? Well, the soldiers are too busy to worry too much about a little petty thievery. And anyway, the stuff I sell is too useful. Useful to who? Certain servants of Avernum are always needing locks, picks, and poison for their pr projects. You sell to thieves, and spies, and Avernite infiltrators, and soldiers like you. How are you going to infiltrate an empire fort without potions, huh? So you can take your pretended moral superiority somewhere else. She grins and starts sharpening a small, wicked-looking dagger. Amalia continues to brazenly work on her tools, which are obviously intended for thievery, sabotage, and worse crimes. Occasionally, she flashes you a smile. She's missing a number of teeth. Heard anything about the destruction of Katra? Plenty. If you find any good loot there, I'll give you a good price for it. Uh, we'll be sure to bring you some nice stuff. She chuckles. Adventurers without many scruples. The best kind. I'll give you a good price, and I'll keep quiet. And I'll keep quiet. I'd like to buy equipment. Amalia so shows you the sub-selection of her wares more suited to a wandering adventurer. I would like to sell something. I don't need anything. Alright, come back when you have something you want to sell. I don't ask annoying questions. You meet a small woman with delicate features and long brown hair. She looks up from... Behind the large pile of arrows, she was busily fletching. Welcome to my shop, adventurers. You can call me JR. Nice arrows. Thanks. I'm making these arrows for the troops. You can purchase some yourself if you like. It looks like the troops need a lot of arrows. They do. Every weapon maker around here is busy. We're preparing for the worst after what happened in Katra. What do you expect will happen now? I think that is clear. The Empire is going to kill every Vernite they can get their hands on. If we don't toughen up, toughen up fast, we'll all be dead. May I buy some of your fine wares? JR makes quality weaponry. She only sells the soldiers, so you're in luck. Right, I don't even think that is a relief. I'm always behind. Okay, does this have a portal pile on? It doesn't look like it. Although, what's in this corner? You meet, a thin, you meet a small, lovely woman, wearing the loose, thin garb of a dancer. This inn has a small stone stage in the center, and she is using it to practice. Bereft of an audience, she seems depressed. She glides gracefully over to you. Welcome, I am Elodie. Uh, nice costume. Are you a dancer? She sighs. Yes, I'm just passing the time till tonight. I'll be dancing. You should come to the show. Perhaps I can make it. He does a twirl on one foot. It's a move both graceful and pulse quickening. A Burnice have always needed some cheering, now more than ever. I guess being thrown down here gave me my calling. What did you do on the surface? I was one of the last people thrown into a Vernum. They didn't want me to dance up there. Too, uh, stirring, they said. I wouldn't give it up, so they threw me down here. At least I'm in a place where people need beauty in their lives. She smiles and blushes. It's not much, I know, but it means a lot to me. Being around soldiers doesn't worry you. A Burnite warriors are an honorable, honorable lot. Even if they weren't, Commander Johnson keeps order. Anyone who troubles me spends time in the stocks. I don't meet many dancers in Avernum. I am not surprised. When I was thrown into Avernum, my soul was heavy. I could not dance at all. I could not start again until... She pauses. 
Until what? Her movements become clumsy for a moment. She looks upset. I did not come down here alone. We... We try to survive. But I... I am alone now. I will spend my time dancing now. It's the only way I can express my... He stops speaking. As a tear runs down her face, she struggles to regain the simple grace of movement she had when you began to speak with her. It's a partial success. You leave so that she can regain her composure. The bar is tended by a striking woman with short black hair and a pleasant smile. She's quiet for a barkeep. She just raises her eyes up to you as you approach. You ask her name. She simply says, Alice. What have you for sale this fine day? She smiles. Room, five coins. Drinks, two coins. Gossip, three. Any gossip you care to share? She leans close. Archer in town. Name's Gordon. Asking around about passes or some such. He doesn't want people to know about it, but he was rude to me. So now you know. Oh well. She grins mischievously. Uh, drinks all around, please. She nods and thanks and fetches several glasses of wine. You can't tell what the wine was made from, but it's actually drinkable. You ask her where it came from, and she says, Rorick, north end of town. I need a room. Al silently takes your money and leads you to your room. It's very nice, surprisingly warm and cozy for Vernum. You have a quiet and restful sleep. And we also got rid of that status effect, which is that many turns. Like, good lord. I heard you were asking around about passes. At first, he looks upset that you know what he's after. Then he looks you over carefully. Fuck, I know you. You're the ones who went to the Vonatai. It's safe to talk to you. He pulls you aside. You see, I've been going from town to town, looking for certain scrolls from the surface. What kind of surface scrolls? He pulls out a vellum scroll, edged in red ink. This is a red path. Troops down here need passes to get into Empire Lands. I'm looking for a blue and a gray pass. That's why I'm heading down to Murtis. My goal, you see, is to look into some rumors. Why are you headed to Murtis? The gray pass is the most important one, and I hear that there's a prisoner in Murtis who knows where one is. If I get one, I can start looking into certain rumors. What rumors? He looks very worried. I hear from prisoners the Empire is building this portal. From up there to down he here, so they can teleport down a whole army. They'd wipe us all out if they could do that. I'm going to look into it. I'm not the best five, but I know these caves well, well as anyone. That sounds horrible. Maybe I can help. Then you should go to the Tower of Magi. I know that a wizard named, named Madabi is looking for help. You tell Commander Johnson that you, what you learned from the Nefarum's papers. Though the Empire hasn't been able to recruit our enemies, very useful. That will help us allocate our troops. Well done. You're rewarded with a set of quality potions. Okay, so speed elixir. And another energy elixir, which will... I should have kept the invulnerable... Actually, no, I'll go ahead and sell that one later. You meet a tall, gaunt soldier. His face is heavily lined both by scars and age. His expression is locked in a permanent scowl, and his eyes are cold. He looks you over and says, I know you. A soldier, capable of interesting feats, allowed to roam free. Interesting. I am Commander Johnson. What can I do for you? Are you in charge of this fort? He nods slowly, maintaining constant eye contact. I rule this fort. Your eyes start to water. Tell me about this fort. Fort Dubno is an, a knife named at the heart of the Empire. We never miss a chance to slay an enemy of Vernum, or a potential enemy. Has the Empire attacked you? They've sent scouts, the occasional small force. He smirks. They are strong foes, but we can make things a very ugly for them. When we get our hands on them, they get very ugly indeed. He gives you a close look. You're adventurers, are you not? I often look to hire adventurers to go on missions. I have strong troops, but they have their hands full babysitting refugees. If you're interested, let me know. What happens when you capture Empire soldiers? I process them personally. 
I utilize him efficiently for the good of Avernum. He does not elaborate. What mission do you have for me? Yes, I do have something for you. Somewhere to the west, to the north of Katra, some Sliths, the barbarian variety, have a hidden lair. Find it. Enter. Kill their leader. I will make sure you are rewarded. A hidden fort. Any idea of how to find it? I don't know. I have only heard rumors, and I am hesitant to risk my scouts in uncontrolled territory. He thinks about it. A scout did pass through here on the way to Silvar. His name was Gibrain. He had been scouting the Eastern Gallery. He might be able to help if he's still alive. Commander Johnson watches you with a cold, unwavering gaze. He has been merciless. He has been killing the foes of Vernon for many years, mercilessly and relentlessly. It has taken a toll. Hear any interesting news? Nothing good. Nothing to make me happy. The world has gone mad. In Silvar, they are trying to broker peace with the kitties. Elsewhere, they're dealing with the slits. As we don't have enough problems, we are trying to deal with those savages, too. Kitties? You mean the Nephilim? I mean the kitties. They are our enemies. I am not fooled. What do you have against the Sacerakai? Some of them have been allied with us for years. They're savages. I've been fighting them for years. If I'm not ordered... If I'm ordered not to kill them, I won't. But I don't like it. I'm pretty sure that dialogue would be different, though, if we did have a Nephil or a Slith in the party. At least one of them, or maybe both. There are bloodstains in the corner. They are fresh. A closer look also reveals a fragment of tooth. You suspect that someone was savage savagely beaten here recently. The soldiers stationed at Fort Dubno have heard of you and your exploits. However, the farther you get from the Tower of Magi, the more skewed their facts are. At their urging, you tell them stories of your travels in Vonathai lands. However, you have to inform them that no, you haven't slain any demon lords or gone to the surface to destroy entire empire armies. But oh, oops. Didn't know that was an option. Okay, so... We already talked to Gibbrain and Silvar, but let's go ahead and remind ourselves real quick. Big hidden lair. All right, four statues. Some of the fungus here is a light gray with gold speckles. Your knowledge of cave flora tells you that this mold has powerful healing properties. Alas, it's only a small patch. Another speed elixir. You are at the base of a huge mount of rock. The, hu uh, the huge hill dominates the eastern end of the eastern gallery. From the top, you would have a panoramic view of the lands to the west. The ruins of, of a fort are at the top. You inspect the ruins. Most of the walls and buildings have crumbled. There is a small, intact hut in the middle of the ruin. There is a sign on the door. All Vernites welcome. It is surprising that anyone, a Vernite or Empire, would choose to live out here so brazenly. This is a dangerous area. When you knock, a small elderly mage with a sparse white beard opens the door and welcomes you in. A soldier of our unhappy land, a pleasant surprise. Greetings, fellow Averni. I am Kostad. You're understandably suspicious, and he notices. Oh, don't worry. Empire soldiers can't see my hut unless I let them. I'm a spy, you see. He chuckles. I look out to the west for attackers. You enter the hut, still on your guard, and talk to Kostad for a bit. He says, keep and watch here is a risky job. But it's much more helpful than teaching at the Tower of Magi. And more exciting, too. Though I do know a few spells I could teach you if you're interested. Breaks the monotony of spying, yes? Okay, so he does have spells to teach. Although, we can just as easily get that at Formello, I think. Once there were several farms here. 
They've been abandoned and left to be overgrown with lichen for years. You don't even bother to search the ruins. Looters have probably been through here dozens of times. When you get close to this crumbled hut, you hear combat coming from the other side. You quickly and carefully circle around in time to see an Empire and a, a, a Vernite patrol being attacked by a band of Empire soldiers. They won't last long unless you help them. Well, of course we're gonna help out here. Are you kidding me? Make sure we kill this cultist real quick. Freaking stuns. Okay, the knockback is a little bit annoying there because of how... I moved them out of position to where I can't even properly attack them. Alright, at least we kill both of them though. Ooh. Thank you, gymnastics. Soldiers are profoundly grateful for your assistance. You help them bandage and revive their wounded as best you can, and they head off at top of at top speed for Fort Devno. Alright, let's train real quick. This and this. Look for four statues. We'll explore all this other shading, but right now I'm trying to focus on. A band of Sacerakai patrols this unpopulated area of the Eastern Gallery. They hail you when you approach. At first, you think that they are friendly, like most of us in Avernum these days. Alas, it's a ruse. As soon as they get close to you, they brandish their two time spears and charge. Oh my gosh, really? Okay, well, slits are not overwhelming at this point anyway, so. Kill them already.
Okay, well, I do know where the... There it is now, at least. Here is where the four statues are. I'll explore that later. Interesting. There are a bunch of statues here out in the middle of nowhere. They depict lizards, dragons, and other reptilian creatures. There is no visible sign of the tribe which created them. Well, it looks like we found the secret slits. So, I will call it for this part of Let's Play. But, I will see you all soon with the next.